In today's video I'm gonna show you the location of all the components from the engine bay on this Toyota Yaris hybrid. That's because a lot of you guys ask me what is this component or where is that component. Let's remove this cover first and let's quickly remove this air filter housing. And right after the air filter we've got the mass airflow sensor. It's a five wire connector which means that it also has the intake air temperature sensor So let's start from the driver side. We've got here the inverter. This will basically manage the hybrid battery and the two motors which this engine has. These are the wires which goes to the MG1, the electric motor between the engine and transmission. And these are the wires which goes to the electric motor which also moves the car. It's connected directly to the wheels. And when you brake, the motor will take that energy and transform it in electricity. We'll send it to the inverter and the inverter will charge up the battery. Here we've got a small fuse box for the hybrid system. And here we've got a fuse box for regular engine electronics. I've got a separate video with the presentation of the fuse box with all the relays as well. So go ahead and check it out. So let's keep going by presenting you this heat exchanger, which you don't see it on any car. This is basically filled up with coolant and in the middle, through the middle, the exhaust gases will circulate and that's how the coolant is getting warmed up faster and therefore keeping the engine on the operating temperature a lot longer and a lot faster since the engine is not running all the time. You want the engine to be kept on an operating temperature all the time so the engine can run on a closed loop for longer and therefore be more efficient and pollute less. And this is not the only one, we've got a second one right here. A second heat exchanger which is installed on this PCV hose. So basically the blow-by gases from the ignition are traveling up to this valve cover and those hot gases will travel through this hose and we've got here this coolant heat exchanger and again that's how the coolant is getting warmed up faster. The connection of the coolant hose is behind the intake manifold. So by the way this is the intake manifold and something different than a regular car, we've got the fuel rail with the injectors separate from the intake manifold. So you can basically remove the intake manifold without touching the injectors. This one is an engine mount. It will help to not send the vibrations of the engines to the body of the car. Here we've got the AC fluid lines. We've got the high pressure and low pressure. Through the high pressure, the liquid will flow. As you can see, we've got a tiny hose. And through this one, the gases will return. The same liquid will transform in gas and it will return back to the compressor which the compressor is not run by a belt but it's powered by the hybrid battery as you can see we've got the orange connector there so this engine doesn't have a serpentine belt so we've got electric ac compressor the alternator is also the motor which starts the car and you might wonder well what about the water pump well also the water pump it's electric we've got it here here is the connector, it doesn't need too much power. It can spin up to 5000 RPMs and it can be controlled by the computer. That's a big deal because when you have the water pump on a belt, you cannot control that the engine is spinning, the water pump is also spinning. But if you want to bring the engine on the operating temperature as fast as possible, this is actually the third change from a regular gasoline engine. Down here we've got the manifold absolute pressure sensor. We've got here the connector for the NOx sensor and the oil pressure sensor. We've got here the throttle body, which has a six pin connector. We've got here the evaporative solenoid, which is pulse width regulated, as I will show you in a separate video. Down here, we've got the camshaft position sensor. As I said, the injectors with the fuel rail. We've got here the fuel line. This is the hose which goes to the evaporative canister. As you can see, it goes back there. To the fuel tank and then this is the hose which connects to the intake manifold we've got also two pcv hoses this large one which connects before the throttle body it connects right here and then the second pcv hose connected here which is a little bit skinnier it goes and connects on the intake manifold and as i said also the coolant is getting some of its temperature engine oil dipstick engine oil cap we've got the coil packs with the spark plugs under We've got this ground here and then the electric AGR valve through this hose, 
the exhaust gases will circulate once the computer opens the AGR valve. If not, there is nothing going on here and it connects to the intake manifold. So when the AGR valve is opened, the vacuum from the intake manifold will suck in some of the exhaust gases and that's how the engine pollutes less. Back there we've got the oxygen sensor, upstream oxygen sensor and the connector to the oxygen sensor is right here. This is the fuel line. It connects right here to this metal hose. Okay. If you have a look on the driver's side, right under the dashboard, you're going to find the OBD2 port. I've got my scan tool connected. And the third fuse box. On the passenger side, behind the glove box, you're going to find the cabin air filter. And if you remove this rear seat, you're going to find the hybrid battery. The fuel pump is here under this metal cover and we've got the small 12 volt battery. Okay guys, so that was pretty much it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.